problematic. It is fundamentally problematic. We start at noon with our continuing special coverage of the mass shooting in Dayton. A news conference just wrapping up moments ago where you heard the police chief's concern about the killer having a high powered weapon. This as the city mourns the deaths of nine people. The president also speaking a short time ago. He says he's calling the Department of Justice to act now. We have asked the FBI to identify all further resources they need to investigate and disrupt hate crimes and domestic terrorism, whatever they need. We, must we will hear much more from the president in just a moment. But first, we want to get to Dayton, where there's been a lot of activity over the past couple of hours. Yeah, we have team coverage right now. Alexis Moberger is breaking down what was said at a news conference just moments ago. But let's start with Terry Sullivan, live outside of Ned Peppers, where that shooting happened. That bar is expected to reopen at any time, Terry. Well, Katie, right now the bar remains closed, but I want to step out of the way because a woman showed up not too long ago, maybe about 10 minutes ago. I'm going to hop over in a second to see who she is and what her story is. But uh, she has been removing some of the memorial. Ma'am, what's your I'm name? Annette Gibson Strong. And what are you doing right now? I'm removing the memorial out of their door because they want to open. And this isn't over. These babies haven't even been buried. Did you know any of the people? Yes, two of them. Who did you know? Uh, I knew the boy and the pregnant and the girl with the baby. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. My heart hurt for them all. And their mothers and their family and their babies. And it's just not time to move this memorial. They want to open, so I'm going to allow them to open. Good luck as you continue that very difficult task. She's looking for people to maybe help her move the memorial right now. Now, usually this is a very busy lunchtime crowd down here. Again, you can see they're not they're not opening, but that memorial is still growing. And it's been a somber place at times. We've seen, you know, very quiet people kneeling down to pray, but we've also seen people yelling at each other about whose fault it is. Some people blaming the president. Others say mental health is the real issue. Brittany Stacy was here with her daughter to lay some flowers. She says it's time that something is done. We wanted to come pay our respects. We actually own a business around the corner, um, so this is our home. It's very close to home. Um, it shouldn't be happening, and we all should have a voice in this, and we all need to do something. If it's taking to the streets, going to rallies um, peacefully, protesting. We all have to do something about this. Back out live, uh, you see the traffic is crawling along uh, the street here in front of Ned Peppers, and it's also packed with media as well. Um, we're told just down the block at uh, Blind Bob's, Dayton Mayor Whaley is having lunch right there. We have a, a sister station crew inside to see what happens there, to see if she has anything to say. Uh, but for now, the media gaggle continues outside of Ned Peppers as we wait for it to reopen. Alexis Moberger was at a news conference earlier. Alexis, what did uh, the police chief have to say? Well, Terry, it just wrapped up and it was a very brief conference. In fact, we didn't learn too much. And again, it just wrapped up right there behind us at the Dayton Convention Center. But as far as the motive, we still don't have much information as police are still trying just to piece everything together. But we did just learn that police found 41 shell casings from what they believe is Connor Betts' gun. Something else we're told Betts arrived in the Oregon district with his sister, Megan Betts, and another man. As for who that man is and the relationship with Betts, it's still unclear. But police can tell us this, that the man is still in the hospital, even right now. Another question that was asked during the news conference is if Betts intentionally targeted his sister, Megan Betts. Here's what police had to say. And I don't think we can know that for certainty. It seems to just defy believability he would shoot his own sister. But it's also hard to believe that he didn't recognize that was his sister. Um, so we just don't know. 
At this point, 11 people are still in the hospital recovering. And the Dayton, Oregon District Tragedy Fund has also been set up through the Dayton Foundation so the community can help the victims as well as their families. As for the next update and the next news press conference to get the latest on this mass shooting, we still don't have a time or a date set. They told us today that Mayor Whaley says that once they know and have more to tell us, that is when they'll set up the next conference. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, Alexis Moberger, live there this morning. Well, President Trump speaking from the White House also this morning. He condemned the weekend shootings in Ohio and Texas as barbaric attacks and crimes against all humanity. The president also says that he wants legislation providing strong background checks for gun users. We must seek real bipartisan solutions. We have to do that in a bipartisan manner that will truly make America safer and better for all. First, we must do a better job of identifying and acting on early warning signs. I am directing the Department of Justice to work in partisan partnership with local, state, and federal agencies, as well as social media companies to develop tools that can detect mass shooters before they strike. As an example, the monster in the Parkland Heights well, as the president wrapped up his comments this morning, he also made a pretty noticeable flub. Take a listen. May God bless the memory of those who perished in Toledo. May God protect them. May God protect. Obviously, the president should have said Dayton instead of Toledo. Well, happening right now, there is a prayer vigil happening for the victims of this tragedy. We want to show you a live look of what's happening at Livet Pavilion in downtown Dayton. You can obviously see that woman that Terry interviewed earlier. She is there. looks like picking up some of those flowers because, again, uh, Ned Peppers wants to reopen today, so they are simply just moving those over. A lot of people showing up to where this shooting happened to pay their respects to all of the poor, the, the victims that lost their lives in that shooting over the weekend. Now, ABC6 Jeff Reddick is also there right now. We will get a live update from him coming up at that actual visual at 1230.